Hello everyone. Today's date is March the 20th, uh, 2020. So it's been uh, almost a week or roughly a week that uh, Luxembourg has been in some form of um, containment slash lockdown. So people are still allowed to get out of their houses uh, if they absolutely need to work. So if there is no other way for them to telework. Uh, or if they have a very important job, like uh, if you if you work in healthcare or if you're a policeman or whatever, you need you know you need to get out. You cannot telework. Um, you are also allowed to get out to get some fresh air, to go to the to a medi a very important medical appointment. But apart from these reasons, you are uh, required to stay at home. And if you can, you are also required to telework. So this is not a video about the coronavirus. Uh, but I felt important to give a little update about the coronavirus, especially because it's actually the reason I'm making this video now is indirectly related to it. So this video is about a topic that I find very important, which is uh, keyboards. I really think that keyboards are very important and people should pay a bit more attention to their keyboards. Why? Because keyboards are basically your tool. So if you have a job where you, you write, uh, if you have to write a lot, if you write reports or any type of document, and if you write code like me, I write a lot of code, I write a lot of reports. Well, my go tool is actually a keyboard. So it's not necessarily my programming language or it's not necessarily, uh, I don't know, my editor, even though I have also very strong opinions about text editors and maybe I'll make another video about that. But this video is really about the keyboards. And everything related to keyboards, really not just the hardware part, but also uh, things that are more related mm -hmm. to, let's say, for example, the um, well, the, the, the layout of your keyboard or uh, the type of your keyboards, so different types of keyboard keyboards. And I really think that it's very important to think a little bit about these topics. So when I started university uh, some time ago now, I was typing a lot on my laptop and I found that after some months I started uh, having some um, some uh, some pain in my wrists and I thought okay the reason why I have this this pain is because I'm typing so much you know and also because uh, so there were two reasons so first of all I thought okay you know my laptop keyboard is kind of crap you know it's not this. Uh, it's not ergonomic in any in any shape or form, and also the layout. I was so the French layout is called Azerty, but it's basically the same logic than than QWERTY, um, which are layouts that were made for typewriters. So they are really not made for computers. Um, and I was really, you know, I was typing, and my hands were really traveling a lot, you know, and and I had to really to you know to, to 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 write what i had to write i really had to move my hands a lot around and i thought okay this is completely stupid there has to be a better way and actually there are there are much better ways so the first thing i was looking for was is there a better layout than the azerty layout so i really cannot remember how i found this out probably i was looking for i was googling for something like ergonomic keyboard layout or whatever but I found the Beppo layout, and the Beppo layout is the, the French equivalent to the uh, US Dvorak layout. So Dvorak slash Beppo layouts are layouts that are optimized for uh, computer for computers. In the in the sense that, first of all, all the letters are rearranged in a way that the most used letters are on the home row. So the home row is the, uh, the it's really the, the middle row in your keyboard where you have these little numbs where you know where you have to put your fingers. And with this uh, Beppo layout, your hands stay on the home row most of the time. So you don't have to travel around a lot. So that's the first very interesting uh, aspect of the Beppo layout. Um, I'll put up a, a little picture of the Beppo layout and you'll see uh, how it looks like. And especially you'll see how the letters are distributed because... Not only is the home row the most important row and your hands don't have to travel as, uh, as much, but you also have uh, the letters that are... Uh, that's my cat. The letters that are um, placed in a way that you have 50% of the amount of letters that you use on your left hand 
and 50% on your right hand, which is not the case with the standard Azerty layout. Uh, and I'm quite sure it's the same problem with the QWERTY layout. That was the first thing. So I wanted to learn this new layout and I wanted to know how to touch type. I didn't want to be looking at my hands while I was typing, which is something that I was doing up until then. And I really thought, okay, you know, I'm, I don't know what job uh, I'll have in the future, but I'm sure it will consist in typing. So I, I really need to know how to type and I really need to know how to type without looking at my hands. And now, you know, I, I when I switched to this new Beppo layout and I really forced myself to learn how to type, it was a bit difficult the first week, but you get used to it quite fast, actually, and you learn it quite fast. And now that I'm typing without looking at my hands, first of all, I type faster. And, and second of all, I, I yeah, I, I even I, I, I don't have to, to really think so much about oh, where do I have to put my hand now? And uh, is it over there? Is it over here? So I really can just typing. And this is really, really the uh, one of the best investments I ever made. And it, it really blows my mind, actually, how I, I have, I know people that have been typing on keyboards for years, for literally for decades, and they never thought, you know what, L I should learn how to touch type. They are still looking at their hands, they're still looking one or two fingers. I, I, it really blows my mind. I mean, if your job is just typing and typing and typing, just learn how to touch type. I mean, these people are the reason why we have a 40-hour work week, because it takes them so much damn time to write an email. If they knew how to touch type, I mean, we, we, they would do the same amount of work in, in just, you know, half of the time. Anyway, the other thing I did uh, after uh, being interested in layouts and learning how to touch type was, okay, is, are there better keyboards than, you know, this stupid... Uh, staggered uh, membrane keyboards. So I was looking online and I bought this thing. It's a um, Type Matrix uh, 2030. So it's still a membrane keyboard. So it's still, for, for this reason, not optimal, but it's still quite interesting. It has, it has been my daily driver. Well, not anymore now, but for a, quite some time. I, I must say that I really enjoy it, to be honest, um, because it has uh, several things that are interesting. But I think the most, for me, the most interesting aspect is that, first of all, it's ortholinear. So you don't have to have your fingers in a weird shape to, to type. That's the first thing. The second thing that is interesting is that the enter, the backspace, and the delete key are in the middle, which means that you can trigger them with your index finger, which is uh, much more powerful and strong than your pinky. So these are keys that you use a lot and the pinky, you know, using the pinky for this is really, really not optimal. So this has been, I must say, quite a good uh, investment. Uh, but the problem, if you want, with this keyboard is that it's still a membrane keyboard. So uh, I wanted to look into something else. So my cat is trying to open the door. And we're back. So I opened the door for my cat. So um, yeah, this keyboard, keyboard, it was quite, quite uh, interesting, but it's a membrane keyboard still. And I was reading a lot about these mechanical keyboards. I, gamers really enjoy those. I'm not a huge game. I play some games sometimes, but really I'm not, I'm not a gamer. Um, but still, I also read online that these were quite pleasant to type on. And I thought, you know what, I'm typing all day long might as well be a pleasant experience. So I was looking into these mechanical keyboards. They're a bit more expensive in general, but you, you can get relatively cheap mechanical keyboards. I don't know if they're worth the money, but still. Um, and I wanted something that was portolinear, first of all, and that was, well, mechanical. So I bought this thing two years ago now, and that's an Ergodox EZ. It's ortholinear, as you can see. It has uh, the enter and the backspace key. Well, actually, you can configure it. You can configure it how you want. So you have an you have a, an online tool that allows you to completely reprogram every key. So you can, you know, if you want to to say that this is the A key or whatever, you can do it. And this could be your enter key or, and it's really, really, really pleasant to type uh, on. Um, 
it has so it's a mechanical keyboard it has uh, uh, mx silent red switches so it doesn't make too much noise uh, but it's very very pleasant to type on it's really really very pleasant you can remove the keys and you can and as you see so these are the mx silent red switches is very it's very very pleasant to type on i i really think that it's uh I, I cannot really describe it, to be honest, why it's so pleasant, but it's really, it, it feels very pleasant to type on. And um, I really think that, you know, if you're if you're typing all day long on a keyboard, as I was saying, it might as well be a pleasant experience. And I really think that with a mechanical keyboard, you can really get this very nice, I don't know, very nice experience. It's very, very pleasant. It's very, it's almost fun to type on a mechanical keyboard. And I really would recommend uh, looking into this. Anyway, so this is this is a, a topic that I really find very interesting. Uh, I really think that people should think a bit more about their keyboards, not only about, again, the hardware, even though I really think that going for an ortholinear layout, it's a bit weird at the beginning, but you get used very fast to it, and it's much more comfortable than the staggered keys so staggered keys are completely stupid I, I don't know why they still exist um, apart from this I really think that people should really switch to an optimized Dvorak slash Bepo slash whatever your language layout oh by the way so the Bepo is optimized for French but you can type English on it quite easily as well it's just the w key that is a bit far away because w is not a letter that you use a lot in English in French sorry so they put it relatively far away from the home row, but apart from this key, the rest is quite, uh, I mean, it's, it's quite comfortable to type English on a BIPO layout. So even if you type uh, all manners of different languages, so I, I type in French, I type in English, I sometimes, not a lot anymore, but I used to type more in German, it still works quite well. Uh, I type in Portuguese, I type in Luxembourgish as well. The BIPO layout works for a lot of different European languages, even though it's optimized for French. Um, so I would really recommend you switch to the BIPO or the Dvorak language if you're just typing in English, or if you know if you're American, go for the Dvorak layout. There are other optimized layouts. Actually, a colleague of mine um, that is also into keyboards gave me this one. So uh, he just you know had it laying at home and he gave it to me. This actually, to be honest, I don't know. I think it's the Colimac Col Col layout. So it's a, it's again a bit. It's another type matrix. Uh, it's not. It's also optimized. I think this one, the Colimac. I'm not sure if it is, but I think this one is optimized more for programming, like you have all the different, you know, programming symbols that you need. But anyway, I really recommend it. Um, as I was saying, for me, learning how to touch type. Getting a little bit into keyboards, so I'm not a huge keyboard enthusiast, but getting a little bit into keyboards, learning how to touch type has been one of the best computing investments I ever made. The best computing investment was, uh, without a doubt, learning Linux or, you know, using Linux. Linux, I've been using Linux distributions for more than 10 years. The second best investment was learning uh, the R programming language, which is basically the reason I have a job, really. Um, and the, I think really the third investment was uh, learning how to touch type and, you know, getting a little bit interested into keyboards and, and finding a keyboard that, that is comfortable to type on. So I would highly recommend you also uh, look into that. Um, so this has been a, a video with, you know, where, where it's just me ranting for almost 15 minutes. So the next video will be again about some uh, R programming tips. So stay tuned and stay safe, stay home. Uh, and if you have, you know, any type of symptoms, don't go to the doctor, call the uh, coronavirus hotline. I'm sure there's one in your country. And, you know, just don't, don't be stupid and go out and infect other people. Stay safe.